Okay, so I've been teaching math for many, many years, and what I've found is that when students first initially start taking algebra, um, many of them, I don't know, maybe like 75%, make a lot of mistakes with this. They confuse this type of equation. Now, they can do this type of equation pretty easily, like 2x is equal to 8, or maybe like x plus 3 is equal to 7. So these type of equations they can do without uh, too much difficulty, but when you start learning this stuff, you know, a lot of students are like, hmm, you know, I don't, I'm a little confused here. I kind of know what to do. But they don't like these type of equations because of what? Because of fractions. And when students see fractions, they typically have this type of, you know, uh, facial expression. Or like, listen, uh, you can keep this equation, but I'll be happy to do these type of equations all day long. But don't give me these. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, we're going to have to figure these guys out as well. Now, most students will eventually get pretty comfortable with doing these type of equations. But, uh, you know, if you are just starting out in algebra or you're reviewing algebra, you've been away from it for a long time, uh, this is uh, a type of equation that is worthy of a quick review, okay? So even if you can't solve this, let's review it anyways. So I'm going to give you a couple different ways you can think about it. Now, if you want to um, pause the video and go ahead and find the solution to this basic one-step equation just to kind of uh, you know, make this into a quick pop quiz, and that's always uh, the best way to watch my videos. But uh, we're going to get to exactly how to deal with these type of fractional equations here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to, what I like to believe personally uh, is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, pretty shortly, about a week or so. Um, I also have many, many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, AccuPlacer, Maybe the uh, Alex exam, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe the ASVAB, a ton of other courses. Uh, all those courses have, or all those exams have what in common? They have a math section. You don't do well in the math section. You don't do well on the exam, so I can help you prepare. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I do not have your test, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, if you're homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you that are just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you truly are serious about wanting to learn math, and I'm um, you know, just kind of assuming you have an interest in math by watching this video, but if you are a math student and you're serious about wanting to really do well, then you have to be serious about taking great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, there's one thing I can point to with consistency, and that is those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who were like me way back in the good old 1980s, what was I doing? Well, I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math. They were like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, did you see this? Da, 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 da. Look, that's how we remained distracted back in those days. But what do you have today? Well, you have your lovely cell phone. You have all types of things to distract you. And I, you know, I get that. Um, however, if you can't focus... Uh, not only in math, but anything you're trying to be successful at, you're going to have a difficult time. So the best way to focus in mathematics is to be, you know, obsessive about taking uh, fantastic math notes, right? That's just going to have, it, everything is going to go so much better for you. So if you're having a difficult time in math right now, start doing that. Things will get better for you. Now, in the meantime, you can use my math notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, let's get into this equation. Now, if you want to pause the video and, and try this, you know, I would definitely suggest uh, doing this. Now, let me just make one comment here, uh, something you never do with equations that involve fractions. You never, ever want to do this. There might be a couple exceptions, but a lot of students, they'll be like, oh, I got fractions here. I got my calculator and what they'll do, and if this is you, don't worry about it because a lot of students kind of try to, you know, uh, beat the system this way. They're like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these fractions. I'm going to turn them into decimals. Okay, so they'll go ahead 
and they'll turn these guys into decimals. Now, in these particular fractions, you could do that, but that's definitely not the way you solve these problems. Or you're like, I don't want to deal with the fractions. I'll turn them into decimals and use my calculator. Never do that. Okay, just that's not good. All right. Uh, now, again, on most tests and quizzes, your calculator probably won't be allowed anyways. But uh, if you're thinking in those terms, yeah, don't think, uh, don't do that. Let's just move on and uh, do some basic problems here just to check your current skill level in solving equations. All right, let's take this first guy right here. So I have 2x is equal to 10. How do I solve this basic one-step equation? Well, hopefully you're saying, all right, uh, don't we have to divide both sides of the equation by 2? Uh, absolutely, that's exactly what we need to do. So I have 2 divided by 2 is what? Well, that's going to be 1 or 1x, one okay? So x is equal to 10 divided by 2, which is 5. That is the solution. And to uh, get the solution, right, which is x equals a number, it took me exactly one step, okay? And that step was uh, division, all right? I divided both sides of the equation by 2. Now, in algebra, uh, when we're solving equations, basically what we're trying to do is get that x variable. It could be x, it could be y. It doesn't make a difference what the variable is, but we're trying to get it by itself and equaling to one number. This is the solution. Now, in this particular uh, problem, what we're trying to do is get like a 1x. So I'm like, I want to get a 1. There's a 2 here. So I can get a 1 in front of this x. So if I have a 2x... I'm like, hmm, what can I do to make this into a 1x? Well, if I divide this by 2, this turns in that into a 1. So that's why I'm taking that step. So if you think in those terms, this is going to help you out. All right, now let's take a look at this problem. But this problem we're going to do slightly different, okay? So this is 2x is equal to 1 fifth. I have a fraction here. So if you're thinking, well, don't we need to do the same thing? Don't I have to divide both sides of the equation by 2? Yes, okay, so you could do, you could uh, think of taking your steps uh, basically in this uh, way. This is uh, totally fine and proper. However, this gets a little confusing for students uh, because we're dealing, we're kind of creating a complex fraction situation here. But let's go ahead and follow through here. I'm going to give you an alternative way of doing this, and then we'll take a look at the uh, our first problem just so you're, you know, you don't have any confusion with dealing with uh, these type of equations. So here, how do I solve this? Well, this is 1 fifth divided by 2. So let's write this out this way. 1 fifth divided by 2, or 2 over 1. So that's the same thing as 1 fifth times, I remember I flipped these guys here when you're uh, dividing fractions. This becomes multiplication. I flip this, that's equal to 1 half. So I get x is equal to one-tenth, okay? So that's what x is equal to, one-tenth. But I had to kind of go through all this kind of, you know, uh, complex fraction work to get to that answer. Now, let me give you an alternative way to think about how to deal with uh, equations. So here, I'm dividing, uh, in this particular equation, I'm dividing both sides of the equation by two. But really, another way you can think about this is that you're multiplying um, both sides of the equation by one half, all right? So if I'm multiplying by one half, that's the same thing as dividing by two, all right? So this is, when you see a fraction, start think in terms of fractions to get your x by itself. So I'm going to say, okay, instead of dividing uh, both sides of the equation by two, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to write it as, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by one half, okay? So you could see, 1 half times 2 is 1x. Now I have 1 fifth times 1 half. That's 1 tenth. All right. That's much more direct and kind of logical than making, you know, doing what we just did previously with all those complex fractions. Of course, you get the same answer, but this is the best way to approach um, equations that have fractions either in front of the variable or fractions over here. So now let's put it all together and deal with this guy. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, I want to solve this equation. Uh, now, if I'm kind of keeping, you know, with the original way I was doing equations, I could be like, well, I got two-thirds here. Don't I have to divide both sides of the equation by two-thirds? Yes, that is correct, okay? But now I got all this complex fraction stuff to deal with. I'm going to have to go one-fifth divided by two-thirds. And let's just do this uh, just to 
make the point extra clear. So that's going to be one fifth times three halves. So this is going to be three tenths. Okay, so that's going to be our answer. Now, I suggest you don't do uh, these type of equations this way. And this is why students, you know, typically a lot of students aren't the strongest in fractions when you're first kind of at this level. Uh, so they can, you know, everyone can stand more practice with fractions. So that's the first problem here. And two, you're dealing with complex fractions and, you know, there's more of a chance to make a mistake when you're doing this work. Okay, so our answer is three tenths. But if I'm saying to myself, all right, look, my objective is to get X by itself. So what do I need to do? What can I multiply two thirds by, okay, to get one X? Well, the answer is very easy. It's the reciprocal. You just flip this, three halves. Three halves times two thirds is one X, okay? So if I'm gonna multiply this side by three halves, just multiply this side over here by three halves. And what am I gonna get? Well, one times three is three, and five times two is 10. That's three tenths, I am done. There is the answer, okay? So when you're dealing with, uh, again, these basic one-step equations that have either fractions as their coefficients or fractions over here, you want to approach it in this way, okay? This particular way. Again, uh, knowing, all right, saying, well, it's the same thing as saying, oh, two-thirds x is equal to one-fifth. Yes, I am technically dividing my both sides of the equation by two thirds. If you continue to do these problems this way, you're going to end up making mistakes. All right, that's been my, um, you know, kind of like what I've observed over the years. So you want to get in the habit of solving your fractional equations this way. Everything will become much easier. So uh, hopefully if you were confused with this, okay, that's a good thing. If this caught your eye and you're like, yeah, these kind of equations, um, you know, confuse me a little bit. Well, hopefully this is, the little video has helped you out. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over, uh, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced math on my channel. So, you know, nobody should be failing math you know, these days. Okay, so if you're having a difficult time, there's so many resources out there. Of course, you got to do your part. You got to take great math notes. You got to talk to your math teacher. But if you need additional help above and beyond, you know, that, you know, there's a ton of uh, other teachers out there that can help you out. So if you'd like my teaching style, please take advantage of the videos I make. That's why I make them for. My goal always is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay, so everyone could be successful in math if they want to, but it's man, there's no shortcuts either, too. you got to do the work. But uh, if you need more help um, beyond my YouTube videos, my best math help will be within my math help program. And if you really want to learn fractions from me, you'll find uh, fractions in my pre-algebra course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.